was. I mean, yeah, <laughs> other than that, okay. everything was good. So I'm really okay. sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, th why does this happen? Okay. Oh, let's go back. Uh, that was sad because we had a good bit of banter as well. Uh, now everything was unscripted. But we oh, did well. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, un unless you by any chance recorded y your half, which I don't think you did. That uh, smart. I mean, it's not your fault at all, but <laughs> yeah, what a pity. Okay, let's begin. Hi everyone, welcome back to our second half of the Flashpoint uh, of the 23 seconds uh, Corp site review. Joining me today is my dedicated Patreon supporter, Shane. Hi Shane, how are you doing? There. Hello? Hi. Okay, yep, just making sure you are <laughs> audible and everything. Let's get down to the Corp site. Okay, we start with a couple of BioRite Ice. Um, Fairchild 1.0. This is. HB's pup. One to res and two subroutines. Pay one credit each time. Mm. Do you like it? I do. I like it. Um, it, it yeah, and that's a great comparison is to uh, is to pup. It's more parasite resistant. That's pretty good. Um, oh, yeah, it is. And certainly, you know, you're going to pay the clicks of the credits um, in almost all cases uh, to do that because it is a little more impactful. I think of a of a subroutine. So I do like it. Uh, it's competing against a lot of really solid early game bioroids that HB has access to. Um, you know, your, your Victors, your Elis, etc. Uh, so I don't know how much play it's ultimately going to see. Um, but I, I still think it's, it's good, despite being, you know, yoggable. Um, but a, mm. any one-cost ice, <laughs> I would yeah, hope it's going to be pretty yoggable. So. Yeah, I mean, it's yoggable but not parasitable. So I guess yeah. I'll take that. Take that. Yeah, and you might even see it for one influence. I think you might even see it out of faction. Um, oh yeah, it is one influence as well. Mm, there is some competition for pup. I mean, pup pup is as well, and pop pup is as well. So those are all kind of competing for the same slots. But yeah, at least uh, um, less than clicks. So. Yeah, the, yeah, it's good to see that all three corp site factions have uh, one re uh, have a very cheap pop up pup esque thing. So yeah, that's good. Um, but it'll cost you three Fernando Cortez. So maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's interesting they bring up the cheap uh, bioroids uh, because I, a few months ago, every time I try to build a rush, rush HB deck, I look at their eyes and go, they're all pretty expensive. There are no cheap eyes. They don't have wraparounds, they don't have pups, you know. And mm -hmm. yeah, the cheapest thing you can get is next eyes, which is pretty weak to Parasite and for those people who have been building rushy HB decks like me this is a godsend basically um, this is such good early game ice for sure you combine this with Ravenna Victor Eli Ooh, I mean, yeah, you got no, a lot of talking. good cheap ice there yeah and yep it's it's really good for rush decks this is not an ice that is auto include in every HB deck unlike Eli or Architect uh, in more glacier style decks where you want to tax the runner out, this won't do as much. You are better off playing the Byroid, the bigger, fatter Byroid Ice. Because this doesn't force out a breaker, and yeah, two credits doesn't really mean much in the late game. But for a rush deck that tries to, you know, has any PDs in the deck, for example, this is pretty good. I like it. What about Sherlock? Uh, 2.0! We got a 2.0 Ice. I think we haven't got a 2.0 in a long time. This oh, not in one, a while. Yeah. It's one more credit to res and one more strength than its 1.0 counterpart. And it has a standard 2.0 benefit of requiring two clicks and has three subroutines. Not too bad. Um, I really find the one tag subroutine very weird. That's not really HB's thing, but it's there. So if you don't have a proper six strength sentry breaker, your best bet is spending two clicks and taking a tag, which is pretty taxing. So I'm... Yeah. I'm not yeah, I agree with you. I, I like I like this. Uh, I like it. I like a lot of HP players. Um, I wanted to love Sherlock. Sherlock 1.0 went in and out of my decks a few times along the way, <laughs> but uh, never, you know, uh, certainly as soon as Vikram came along, you know, Sherlock was his long, long committed to the dustbin. But uh, yeah, the 2.0, I think nowadays, um, given uh, the ice destruction, you know, cutlery, uh, 
factor of, of running anything that's a 1.0 uh, and expensive, it can be dangerous. So here at least they have to you know, use something to break that additional subroutine and kill it. I think that's a pretty big factor. The subroutines are more impactful um, than, say, a Vecrum is, I think. Depends. I mean, sticking brain damage is always great, but you know, adding stall programs to the bottom, uh, especially for someone like an Anarch or Criminal, uh, maybe not Criminal, they have special order, but can be pretty rough. And same thing the, as you, the, the one tag did stick out for me um, it, in that it's an HB giving a tag, which most every runner is dropping nowadays, so spending the time to drop. Oh, but yeah. it's not a trace. It's just a straight up get a tag, yep. which is not something uh, I think we've seen. I think they want, uh, I think they just want it to be more impactful than not, oh, yet another trace two to give the runner a tag or something like that. Um, that, it, that this subroutine is something you actually have to worry about. So I, I, I like it. I'm going to be trying it out. I think in spot, spots where I have Vikram, maybe I might try one of these or two of these just to see how it goes. Yep. It is. It could possibly end up being edged out by some of the other ice in the same price range. We have quite mm-hmm. a few ice in there, and that's I guess that's one problem of designing ice. Basically, once the carpool gets too big, it's very hard to find niche spots. So Sherlock 2.0 is competing with Ichi 2.0 and Assassin. Both yes. of which are around the same price range. Uh, Ichi has the same number of subroutines, and Assassin is not clickable. So, yes, I think it will be quite hard for Sherlock to actually compete with them, but definitely Sherlock has the edge when it comes against Shapers. As you said, it disrupts uh, clone chips, and um, yeah, it's cheaper than Ichi to res, which is always a good thing. Alright, um, moving on to Jinteki. Uh, Hyobu Research Facility. Uh, the first time you play a side game, you gain, uh, you regain the number of credits you spent on that side game as the corp. Uh, it's a zero for four asset, so it's just it's going to be taxing for anyone to trash it if your name is not wizard. So I guess <laughs> it's okay if you're playing in Nise, but I'm sh- I guess there are better econ engines. Yeah, I mean this is it's definitely Nise division help, but it's not enough Nise division help. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, it just seems like I mean it's an asset. You don't. I guess you don't have to protect it, like you're saying, because no one really wants to trash it. It it just it seems okay, but underwhelming ultimately as a, for a deck slot. If you look at all the other alternatives you could have for economy. Yeah, I guess it's it's okay if you can reliably trigger a side game every single turn, mm-hmm. but you can't really do that on the runner's turn because they dictate the tempo of running. And on your turn, uh, there are only so many. Yeah. Uh, Voter intimidation. I guess you can get a few bucks back from that. Yeah, cerebral costs. I suppose yeah. that's about it. The so, uh, one thing I was thinking too about this card is that ironically it might uh, make your side games worse um, and a little more predictable. You know, um, because why not bet two? <laughs> right, you're going to get the money back if the runner wants to match. It's going to cost them two. That's true. It might make your side games worse, but yeah, I guess if it taxes out the runner, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah, I can see it working that way definitely. Well, it's yeah, it's basically a bit under the power curve, but. Yeah, it's still okay. Ah, uh, yeah, um, it's also unique, so you you don't really want to play three copies of this. Yeah. The ice that we wanted to love but just can't bring ourselves to. It's Chrysalis. Right. It's it has the same stats as Swordsman. Um, three to res, two strength, sentry AP, and it has just one subroutine, pretty hefty subroutine, two net damage, nothing to scoff at. Unfortunately, it has a trash cost. Why does ice have a trash cost? What is the world <laughs> coming to? Um, okay, it's a trap. It's a trap. It, that's not too bad. So if it's access from anywhere except archives, um, you potentially get to t- deal to net damage, which we know is pretty good. Shock is pretty good. So a two times shock should be amazing. Except that it's not because they can choose to break it with mimic instead for one credit. Suddenly it becomes a whole lot worse. Yeah, I think this just shows another, some more evidence that MBN is the, the favorite child in, uh, at FFG. That uh, if you compare this to Archangel, it just compares so unfavorably in my eyes. I mean, Archangel is a great card. It's, a lot of cards don't compare favorably to Archangel. No. But the fact that it has a trash cost, like I said, is, is the worst part. I mean, keeping ice on the table is hard enough nowadays. Letting them trash it before you even get it, I think, is, is, is bad. Uh, mimicable, obviously or any other, <laughs> almost any other breaker fairly easily breaks it. Yeah, um, yeah I just, you know, th- three cost, there's just a lot of other better choices than this yeah. ice in that faction, so. I think it definitely could have done with 
a much higher trash cost. I think it's suffering from yep. the same problem as the assets earlier in the core set. They made the same mistake with cards like Net Police. You even know what that is? No one knows. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they just assign trash costs that are way too low and unsustainable, basically. If this so had it shouldn't been a... be cheaper than with a parasite to kill it this way. That is a very good point. That is awful. <laughs> that is so awful. <laughs> Yeah, if this had a 4 or 5 trash cost, I think it would be okay, not overpowered. But I think they were just being uh, conservative with the design, because it's new design space, and, well, it falls by the wayside. Yeah, maybe they were worried about all those Jinteki product recall decks or something? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, mm, hopefully we'll see better trashable eyes in the rest of the cycle. But for now, we'll have to make do with some more familiar cards like this one. Uh, Jinteki upgrade is a Sysop. Uh, whenever the runner makes an unsuccessful run on this server, deal 1 net damage. Now, she can be moved at instant speed for a measly cost of 2 credits. She can jump to another server. This is quite interesting. How do you evaluate this? I definitely think it's interesting. Uh, the effect and also the flavor. I mean, the cycle as a whole, way back before it was announced, I was kind of hoping they would go to Mars uh, as kind of the next stop, but I actually... I'm happy that they decided to do a big event. I think yep. uh, flavor-wise and theme-wise, I think that was a really good decision. And I guess she's a central character um, for this. So that that's pretty interesting to see her in the first pack in a carpool and with an interesting effect. I don't... Um, the only thing about it is, again, looking at sort of, the, you know, the, the network games I play now and the modern runner decks and stuff like that, I just don't see runners making that many unsuccessful runs. There's the initial face-checking type stuff. And then after that, most of them seem to have the tools to run and be taxed, but not run and be stopped when they, you know, when they make runs. That so that's true. the only thing I'm thinking for that is there's not a lot of unsuccessful runs if you compare it to like Hokusai Grid, where you know, you're know you going to get your net damage in and they're probably going to trash it unless they're very poor. Here, I don't know if you get an, a guaranteed effect uh, there. Like you, you have a card slot, you, you click to install, card to res. I don't know if you're going to be able to get it to fire. Yeah, that's true. With Faust and Blackmail so common nowadays, it's hardly the case that the runner will make unsuccessful runs. Certainly not when this card lands. So yes, you do have a point. That being said, you, you um, the faction does have its ways to force unsuccessful mm -hmm. runs between all the Nisei's. So there is a potential combo there. And yeah, maybe as a one of in in with your you make your Caprice Nisei server even less appealing, right? Uh, you could drop yeah. one baddie for it, something like that. And the most notable thing is that this is a very slippery sly character. She can just <laughs> run away at any time. So you can stash her in a safe server and have her come over to your Capri server once you're ready to defend it. That's yeah, is the lore that she went to Wayland or came from Wayland? Uh, she was a... She's, she switches companies, right? Yes, yeah, I think she switched out of Wayland, I would like to mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Very slippery devil right here. So yeah, if you can sustain the two credits to um, bounce her around, she could potentially be a very, very annoying uh, Sysop to deal with. Because, uh, yeah, if you have infinite credits, theoretically, the runner can never trash her without mm -hmm. a political operative. And that's really annoying because most runners have no really good way to deal with net damage. That's true. And I guess one another uh, fairly minor thing, the deck doesn't seem to play, but in an RP deck... There are, I mean, you could put it on a central server because, you know, you get that phenomenon Ooh. when you get built up in a later game where they run and they'll bounce off the end of the run or bounce off one, one go through one ice and not two so they can get to the remotes. Yeah, that's sweet. You could tax that way. Yep, that works. That's pretty nice. That's a pretty good shout. All right, so that's Gregor... Georgia. Not Gregoria. Georgia. And... Georgia. <laughs> oh, man. I mean... I... Even the Mumbat Cycle names were not that bad. I can pronounce Harish Chandra Enterprise, but not this card. Alright, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, Watchdog, NBN card. Uh, no, no. <laughs> well, yeah. there, there's, there's this card in the card pool. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Um, it's called Shoot the Moon, and it does basically mm -hmm. the same thing, except a lot faster. Why of, course I've heard of, shoot, of course I've tried to shoot the moon deck. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has dreams of flares everywhere, free flares. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm with you here. There's not much, a lot to say. I mean, even the art is terrible <laughs> on this card. That uh, it, I mean, yeah, I to me, it seems like um, not even a win more card. It's just when you're winning, it does something. But if, you, if you're the type of deck that 
wants to tag them and you've tagged them, well, then you're winning because you have some nasty things to do with them with the tag. I don't think you need the ice discount. Yep, that's true. The and I only think that's... thing I could think of is that it helps a little bit with, you know, that awkward turn. Uh, I think you've played, definitely in your regionals, you played mid season's deck and stuff like that, or at least on your stream, you played that sold deck. You have that where you have to mid season for all your money. Um, and so that next awkward turn where they go tag me with the medium and it's kind of scary, it could help with that. That's about the only thing I can think of. Yeah, you, you can't play this in NBN. They, they, you, you don't have the expensive ice to make it worth it. I mean, even your resistors are nowadays very good <laughs> against tag me runners. So yeah, you're right. They don't do anything with watched out. So I'm saying that because there's another faction that can use this really well and it only costs one influence. It's called Wayland. Um, have you heard of this faction? Um, apparently, <laughs> it, there's a fourth faction in this game, and it's called Wayland. Um, they, they, they have this. I thought ID it was a called... mini faction. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought <laughs> that was the case too. But apparently, they have this ID called Blue Sun, and it runs some pretty big nasty ice. And they could run this. It's only one influence, and they can use consulting visit for mid seasons, and things could get really nasty from there. So that is the one place where you would run this. I, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying. Oh it's yeah, something you that's can do. true. It doesn't have the blue sun noble problem, or that you sometimes get, which is if the res cost of something is lowered and you take it back with blue sun, yep. it it affects that. But I guess yeah, you get the full price back. Oh, that's an interesting point. Yeah, I mean, certainly would make people wonder what you're up to <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you res this on them. Sure would. Yeah, and yeah, it it is another out in case they install like five different plus streets and, and turn off your scorch plan at least this is something you can do mm -hmm. i i won't promise that it's good let's move on <laughs> hard hitting news uh this was very nearly my pick for um what you call it the most overrated overrated card. Or? yes overrated card um well so you compare this with seesaws and mid seasons and say well I, i'm going to scorch the runner no i can't my turn ends. Well, mm. never mind. Uh, I'll just scorch them next turn. Oh wait, they'll just clear all four tags. And now I'm poor because I spent all my money to trace them. Now what? Nope. So yeah, I can't I can't see myself playing this card in most NBN IDs. It works well in sync. Sync. Yeah, it works really well in sync, I think. I could see myself playing it in a sync deck. Um, over a sea source for sure. I mean, I look at it it's kind of a weird one, yeah. It's not the traditional spot, which is, um, I think it's more, much more mid seasons than it is sea source. I mean, sea source, you're, you're obviously right. You want to get that tag now because you're going to do something with the tag now. Otherwise, it's it's really a waste of money and probably a lot of money. This one just seems like a, a very taxing card. Like either you're going to hit them for four tags and then they're going to take their entire turn in eight credits or twelve to clear it, and they'll be way behind. Um, and you can do that when they haven't stolen the agenda, which is always the problem with mid-seasons, is you, either they get to five points and you're, all your mid-seasons are dead, or that type of thing. Uh, I, That's I don't know, I think, it's, right. I think it's pretty interesting. I think I think I would hold these both mid-seasons and this in my hand, um, depending on the deck, and, and wonder which one I should have and in which amounts, if I was going for that type of thing. I don't know, I feel like mid-seasons is just so much more reliable, because as NBN, you're always leaking agendas. I mean, well, I, yeah, if they get to match point, then you're kind of sad, but that doesn't happen very often especially with your taggy ice so and and it's not like hard hitting news is more efficient or anything they're both one less to play than the trace yep. base, no, the base trace so and yeah and uh, mid seasons has the tendency to tag flood a lot harder than hard hitting news so mm -hmm. yeah if the running the end your action phase like this and the upcoming card that's the yeah, that's I think the most important phrase. That's is, the killer. Is, yeah. It looks great until you see that. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of things that you cannot do. One of the best things about mid seasons is that you can threaten them. Even if they let all the text stick to them, you can close their accounts. Close you can accounts, burn yeah. all their resources. You can't do that with hard hitting news. And mm -hmm. I think that just uh, sells it for me. Right. Oh, good choice. I think you're right. I think a lot of people will try this out and think the same thing. Yeah, I. I... I think that's what's going to happen. But people are going to try this one out and they're going to love it. This is controlling the message. This is an ID to watch out for. So when you trash an installed card, court card, you have to eat a trace for a tag. This tag cannot be avoided and it happens every turn. So if you trash something on the corpse turn, 
you are going to take the trace as well. Mm -hmm. This is nasty. <laughs> this yeah, is I'm, all okay. sorts of nasty. Um, you, do you have any ideas for this deck or any opinions? Oh, uh, definitely. I think it, I, when I saw the idea, I, I definitely liked it. Uh, I mean, compared to the last couple of NBN ideas <laughs> or the last NBN that came out where you're just like, huh, what am I going to do with that? It's kind of a novelty thing. I think this definitely has uses right away. Um, certainly, you know, in answer, you know, who fired the first shot and where we are in the back and forth war. But asset, asset spam is big. Wizard is big. And it's really hard to tax him um, with your NBN a assets um, outside, uh, you know, if you're, if you're uh, especially if, you know, you reburse from Val and it's practically over. Yep. But being able to add a, a tag and cost him two credits and, and a, a click to get rid of that. And then on Parasite, as you, as you alluded to, that also fires. I think it's I think it's gonna be a really good ID. Finally, uh, an MDN ID with appropriate influence. Um, so the MWL <laughs> is gonna cut into it pretty heavily, I think. Uh, there's some decks been going around. I know Klishima has been experimenting uh, with one that's Ooh, yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah, gross. I, I, let's not pretty talk about it here. Uh, People won't like it. Uh, pretty, you know, in the vein of uh, hot tubs and all these other decks that an IG that are just super painful to play against. Yes, um, it, it runs museums. That's all I need to say. Yeah, so I think I definitely think it's going to see play, and I I'm going to try it out. Um, I'm you know my first idea was basically just an NEH deck uh, with this instead, you know, some additional protection from my assets because keeping them alive is really important and upgrades and and all the other important things. Uh, influence obviously a big problem there, lack of draw a big problem there, but I think it's I think it's a it's a a good strong ID um, that I, is going to expand the space a little bit. Yeah. Um... Very good points. As you said, this is the defensive idea of choice um, uh, akin to IG and Gagarin for their respective fact factions. Um, yeah, it's it might even... I, I, it wouldn't replace an any H per se, but if you're playing a moderate amount of assets and you're worried about Wizard or Valencia in your meta, this is exactly what you want because uh, those are your weaknesses and the ID just shows up so much. Especially yeah. considering that those um, so-called hard counter IDs are don't really run link. Um, oh, absolutely. They run so many important resources. The interesting thing about this one, and I, I guess it's for Natch, I don't know why. I don't know why they had to stick it to um, a Jesminder and uh, and you know Forger and cards like that <laughs> by having not being avoidable. I yeah. mean, give Jesminder a nice little power bump, I suppose, if this became big, but not anymore. Yeah, I think that was rather unnecessary. I guess it's mostly for New Angeles City Hall, but that's even that's quite weak. Um. What was I going to say? Yes, the influence is something very important to point out. I I mean, you said that this was an appropriate amount of influence. I don't know. 17 seems like the norm these days, but at least in NBN. But for 4512 seems weak, especially when you compare it against NEH. But looking Absolutely, at the yeah. IDs that are coming out this cycle, all of them seem to have 12 influence. And of all the factions, I think NBN is the most well positioned to... Um, play a 12 influence ID. Influence is so... Jackson. Yeah, Jackson exactly. Influence. They don't need to pay for Jacksons. Influence is such a premium nowadays with the most wanted list. And I guess it kind of sucks if you are playing 3 Astros and 3 Sand Sands um, out of controlling the message and only have 6 influence left to spend. But on the other hand, this ID is self-contained. You Everything you need is in faction. Your tag punishment, your tag... Other tag... Uh, cards and your fast advance, everything's in faction, so you don't really need the influence. So I, I think this will be the most viable of all the uh, twelve influence IDs, at least yep. from those that we've seen so far. Definitely so far, yeah. Side note: I also like that they're bringing back the traditional icons for the corp uh, logos. I think it might telegraph that they are print in the work in the midst of printing uh, all art cards for these corps. That would be pretty sweet. I love the redesigned okay. logos. They're awesome. <laughs> Alright, that love out of the way, let's go for a Wayland card. This is Crisis Management. It's a 3-1 agenda. Do you have anything good to say about 3-1 agendas? Oh boy, do they have to be good to be good. Um, no, not really. Uh, it could, I mean, it can help to drain away, you know, after you mid-season, drain away those I've had worses, which are really annoying to try to get out of their hands. But, you know, Salem's Hospitality would do that better. Other than in, in the, that Argus style of deck, which doesn't see play very often, and I think is a bit weak, of lots and lots and lots of small agendas, profiteering, false lead, etc. I, I just can't see slotting this card. Nope, I can't either. Let's move on. 
more interesting card here because you decided that this card <laughs> was your overrated card, I suppose. Most overrated card of the pack. This is stock buyback. This is another terminal card, so it ends your action phase, and you gain three credits for each agenda in the runner score area. Now, lay it on me. Oh, I, I mean, I mean, it is the most overrated card. I don't think because it's going to get a lot of hype. I do. I have seen some discussion about it, um, and because it's another transaction, I don't think we've seen a transaction for a while for Corset Wayland. I don't know if Corset Wayland needed one, given that green let green level clearance is only one influence. Uh, so. Yeah, it's it's the it part the bottom half screams like mid seasons or screams consulting visit into mid seasons or that type of thing um, because you know you you want to punish them for getting an additional agenda but or for no. being ahead. But no, oh. yes, the the first part <laughs> stops the screaming, silences the screaming uh, pretty quick. So and it's it's very you know, similar to what we discussed in the, in the run area with the sunny card. It's situational, and it's you know you might get. I don't, it depends on your agenda suite exactly. You're not going to get that much money from it that you couldn't get from other cards. And um, and you might get very little. You might get only two back. Or it might sit in your hand waiting for them to steal an agenda, which you, know, you don't really want <laughs> to make happen. So I think it's just too conditional. And with that terminal um, subtype, it just, it's just not going to be a very good card. I don't think you're going to see it very often. Yep. You brought some very good points up. I mean... When I saw this card, the first thing I'm thinking is, hey, let's play an Argus Security since they have lots of small agendas anyway. Um, this, uh, for your information, this works on the number of agendas, not the number of agenda points. So ideally, you want this in a deck with lots of 1 and 2 pointers, so you can maximize the value of this. So you get lots of credits. If they have 4 agendas, that's 11 credits. That's pretty good for one single operation. So what are you going to yeah. do with all these 11 credits? You're going to mid see. Wait, yeah, exactly as you said. <laughs> you can't really seize them. The the best thing about this card is actually you can stick it to the fan site players. <laughs> you better stick it quickly though, because once they get <laughs> artists coming out, yeah, they're you're probably done. gonna dig your R and D for six. All sorts of them. So yeah, uh, I yeah, like you, I'm not buying this either. You really have to build your deck around it. Um, go all out with news teams and stuff. Um, to even make it worth it, and you have to find a way to spend that money. So. Yep, it's not a goal for me. Right, we'll finish off with Sandberg. Neutral, another 0-4 asset. They're really spamming the 0-4 assets out here. I mean, as if Wizard is not strong enough. They are yeah, not thing. Like they, I think they cost a lot of these cards with Wizard in mind, and then every other runner is just stuck not trashing it, I guess, really. Yeah, support. I'm not liking how this is going. But, well, that aside, this is a unique asset that pumps your stre eye strength by plus one for every five credits you have. Caveat, you need at least ten credits, which means that Hernando Cortez is a hard co No, no. Cortez <laughs> is still back. But, yes. Um, this is a pretty nice middle finger to Artman decks. I'm not sure I can say much more about this card. I think it'll actually... Uh, this, I think this is one that is actually getting some hype um how strong it'll be in the end i think in certain decks it will be and certain decks that are already strong and annoying like uh Gagarin, the Gagarin uh glacier type styles i think um uh not hidden temple um but uh there's another one with a different name that actually is actually more of a uh, glacier style deck i think that will benefit a lot from this type of thing i think rp again it's not often played but i think it could because it kind of protects itself or the id protects it and pushes things up into you know more taxing for Faust or to tax out their Davids. So I think this is actually a card that you will see, at least for a while. Um, not much more than a, a one or two of it most. Um, but I think it's, it's something that's going to appear in those types of decks that have an ID power that it helps protect it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's quite very appropriate that you brought up those uh, the Jinteki faction and the Wayland mini faction as the most likely <laughs> candidates to play this. Not just because of the defensive IDs, but also because the ice is typically the most vulnerable to Parasite. And this is kind of a counter to Parasite if you're rich enough. You, they cannot instant Parasite or ice, they have to wait longer for the ice to die down, and that's always good for you. Yeah, this could make Tour Guide really... <laughs> with the typical... Yeah. like <laughs> Just keeping Tour Guide on the table for that, you know, couple, the one or two turns it can be huge, right? Yeah, it's going to be rough. Uh, is it good enough to justify a deck slot? It's really hard to say. Um, I can't really put a verdict, verdict out for this one, but as it stands, the 10 credit minimum is 
kind of a hefty requirement uh, if you are trying to res ice, if you are glacier style deck. So I'll reserve my judgment on this one, but I would want to say that it's probably not com competitive. That's, yeah, you could be right. I think it could you could be on the bubble. One or another, not yet another vote fifty first card or not yet another fiftieth card. Uh, yep. Or 55, if you like museum, I guess, uh, out there. But I don't know if you uh, have the same opinion as I do in looking at some of these cards in this 23 seconds, but it sure seems like they phoned in some of the flavor text on some of these. <laughs> this and a couple couple, couple cards, the flavor text is very bland. I think the artwork is, is generally okay across yep. the cards, but like money is power. That, <laughs> that's about as generic as you can get for a Corp Netrunner card, right? Yeah, I hope they draw more inspiration in the next few packs. Also for the art, the art is okay as a whole, but Watchdog, I, I have to agree with you there, Watchdog really dropped the ball. Um, I'm not sure what they were thinking with that, oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, and a lot of logos and things. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, and the sleeve, the sleeve then, that, that is the worst. <laughs> could, could you botch that card up anymore? I don't think you can. No. So, here's Dan for you. But as Dan continues to stare at us, let's close our uh, data pack review with uh, opinion on the, on the pack as a whole. What do you think? I think it's a good pack overall. I think there's some interesting cards that are going to definitely see play. And I think there's, as we talked about, the ID um, itself. And then I'm uh, just trying to think on the runner side if there's anything that powerful that's going to see play that off. I mean, certainly null. So the two IDs, I think, we're going to see some play and, yep. and uh, are worthwhile making decks around. Um, you know, Mirror, I think it's going to make its way into at least uh, experiments in uh, Runner Stealth decks. Definitely. The Ice, Fairchild, and Sherlock. So I think there's definitely, just off the top of my head there, I could spew out a lot of cards, uh, more cards than are in some of the other packs that are actually going to see play. I mean, sometimes you get a lot of Bite of Fight Older. It's not um, yeah. some of the packs that were in, say, the Lunar Cycle, which <laughs> are super strong, full, chock full of stuff. But I think, it's, I think it's a solid pack. I think it opens up some options. Um, it's just it suffers more from the fact that how many powerful cards are in the card pool right now um, before rotation, that uh, just a lot of them get squeezed out because of better alternatives. That's true. Yeah, um, some of you viewers might be thinking that I'm being very pessimistic with the card reviews, but I'm just talking about it from a purely competitive standpoint. For mm -hmm. the most part, I have to say that there's a lot of cards in this pack that are worth playing, that are playable and are definitely worthy of experimentation. You can't say that for quite a few of the uh, Mumbat Cycle packs. So I'm actually quite appreciative of it. Overall, I think this is a nice pack for most uh, players because there are lots of different cards to try out. It's just that there are not that many competitive cards. It's not a game-changing data pack, which you would usually expect. Like, um, you saw Clot in Sand Sand Cycle and, you know, making a big splash uh, when the first pack of cycles released, but you don't have that here in Flashpoint Cycle. So not that much that will change the competitive meta, I don't think, but a lot of fun cards to try out. Well, so that wraps up uh, this uh, data pack review. Thanks again, Shane, for joining me. Thank you for having me. And that's all we have. So thanks for watching and happy net running. Goodbye. All right. That was